Hi there, and welcome to the very first episode of the Astartes Anonymous podcast, where myself and a group of jellyfish piloting meat suits do our best <laughs> to unravel the mysteries of 40k that no one thought to ask. Today, we'll be discussing the Primarchs After Dark, aka how well each Primarch would theoretically perform in the sack. I'm your host, Tom, and these are my co-hosts. Hello, my name is Lucas, or better known as Moots. Hello, I am Red. I am the Night Lord Man. Yeah, coming in with the accent. <laughs> I'm style. Aaron. I'm the local man, McGee. I'm starting off, as you can sort of see on our little screen now, we have uh, the, the, the sword man himself, Mr. Farsight. And so this got revealed, I think, like two or three days ago, about that? Uh, Yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was two days ago. Start of the week. Funny thing is, I didn't actually think the old Farsight model was that outdated. It was resin for a battle suit, to be fair. See, that's I'm, not a good scene. I knew it was resin, but looking at it, I didn't think you could tell. Yeah, honestly. Also, I think they might have uh, might have revamped it because the battle suit was literally just a bog standard Tau battle suit, and mm -hmm. they just gave it a more unique uh, appearance for Farsight's, you know, mm. reputation. Mm, for sure. It's very fitting to his sort of whole deal, which I quite like. The very honorable the... samurai. <laughs> Let the cherry blossoms and the whole oriental style looking armor. It's very cool. Although, it doesn't stand out a lot. I kind of wish that they made, like, I know this is probably getting close to it being way too, you know, Japanese inspired. I wish they made the sword a little bit more katana shaped. It looks mm. more like a scimitar, <laughs> in my opinion. It's it's really funny you say that because I don't think they've done this with any Tao mech shoulders, what they've done to his shoulders. And it's that sort of layered, sort of Japanese kind of dragon scale sort of thing going on so i think yeah i think i think maybe we'll see that more with with future tower stuff leaning more into that sort of old school samurai um, i mean you can even see in this photo you can see what an, a previous battle suit looked like compared mm. to farsight's improved suit mm -hmm. you see how his like uh, his legs are completely are like look more you know agile and uh more curved in a way yeah i mean i'm just spitballing but what would be cool would be potentially some kind of um this being the start of like a, maybe a new line of battle suits. I mean, could you could you imagine? Oh, that? I hope so. Just Honestly, of... I don't like the towel, but if they did that, I might get into the towel. Well, think about Give that. all of them owner to gauntlets. Yeah, well, melee melee towel battle suits that lean into other aspects of of, of sort of samurai imagery. You know, actually, that would be really cool to have an entire melee towel army based around the far side enclave in this samurai thing. I think that'd be super cool. <laughs> I mean, this is it. I've seen Tao in person for like the first time, like properly, properly, only a few weeks ago, and and I loved them. But there's 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 nothing really there that's gripping me, even though they're very cool. I think that would certainly like push me over the edge. You know, it's mm -hmm. a really small detail on this. That I noticed because I have a towel army myself, but no other battle suit has it unless it's like a third party style bit. Mm. But the plasma gun on his left arm is underneath his fist as opposed to over the top of it, like the one on his oh, left. Oh, yeah. And no other suit has that style of like sort of gun oh, to arm sort can, of thing. You can see it on one of the other suits. I don't think mm. I'd have noticed that. You know what? I, I'm wondering if uh, if this kit that they uh, this new Farsight kit is going to have more uh, weapon options opposed to just a plasma gun. Mm. I think it'd be cool to have like a chain cannon underslung there. It's mm. always been a sort of go to. It has like a supercharged plasma rifle. That's always been like a staple along the sword. So probably not sadly, but I'm hoping it has different poses. Yeah. You know, that, see, that's something that wouldn't be too surprising because when you think about how inspired by Gundams they are. I know Gundams have a degree of posability and that's certainly something that would be awesome to see on Tower suits. Speaking oh, uh, of speaking of the posing, lots of minutes have like a golden angle. Yeah. And uh, this this dude has like eight. It's uh <laughs> he does. He does. It's, it's quite it's glorious. Really great. With in in like note that like, the Tau suit posing and such, if you ever made a Tower like crisis suit, you realize how awful they are yeah. to try and put together. Because the legs are like three different joints, and you want to make like a really specific pose. You have to blue tack that thing, or like partial glue it, yeah. and be prepared to be put apart at a moment's notice, sort of thing. It's it's horrendous. No, absolute absolute nightmare. But I think it looks really cool. I love the extra details they put into him. I'm hoping that future tiles sort of take take from this a little bit. You know. Mm. Same. What I'm curious about more than anything is what is the paper on the end of his sword? <laughs> What's written on there? 
I don't know. <laughs> it's just a Tao Puerto seal, you know. Yeah. So, so <laughs> <up>. <laughs> they're, they're pra- it's praising the Emperor, obviously. Tao Marines so, when? Tao- Look at <laughs> right, the let's... first one right there. Let's let's shimmy on over to these chunky bad boys, as GW like to call them, the Law Tomata. <laughs> Which is a terrible name. I'm hoping no one calls them that unironically because that is just the worst bloody thing uh, that, that GW's ever said. If I hear someone say that unironically, they're going to have to eat the law tomato. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first thing with these bottles that drags my attention is that rocket launcher with the claw attached to it. Mm, I love it. It's Are so they cool. just going to like grab somebody and then blast them? <laughs> I could, honestly, not gonna lie, I couldn't tell what this was when I first saw it. The little rocket launcher thing, I couldn't tell. I yeah, it's like a, it's an ex- if you scroll down, there's like a little extendo claw on it. <laughs> so, like, punches forward, grabs some poor, like, criminal, and he oh, just yeah. thumbs nothing afterwards. <laughs> just here in the distance, criminal, 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 criminal. It just comes <laughs> flying at you. <laughs> well, just Is that a game of Gallo Dark? You open a door that just grabs you. <laughs> I, I I just I just can't unsee them coming towards you and doing the fucking uh, Reggie cries. No no no. no. <laughs> <laughs> These are the Reggie Mata now. Yeah, I, I'm, a there huge, we go. I'm a huge fan of them because I plan to make an Ambot kill team, and these guys would be perfect for bits and map and variations using the Tyranid Warrior sort of stats. I think what you'll find though is if you try if you try and mix and match these models with Ambot bits. You know, I honestly think you're in for a treat. I think that's going to be an absolute winner. I think it'll be so bloody cool. In in terms of like the, I, I'm not a huge fan of the little feet. The feet are kind of, <laughs> eh. uh, they are a little dumpy. Yeah. yeah, I think if they if you can extend the legs to make them look like they're standing a bit taller and maybe fill out the feet a little bit more, they'd be better. But these are, I I, I honestly like all the Pal Knight Enforcer things. Did mm. any of you, uh, any of you three, play? Um... On GameCube, Xbox, or PlayStation, uh, a game called Metal Arms: A Glitch in the System. Nope. Yes. No, it sounds yes. familiar, Who but I can't yes. remember. Yes, I did. <laughs> Does this not remind you of that a little bit? That that's fucking true. But, well, can we pictures on screen of Metal Arms when the time comes? <laughs> but that is, they remind me of the the really big ones. It reminds me uh... of a robot that was actually voiced by the guy who plays Joe in Family Guy. It was a big one, and he had his, <laughs> his head oh was my... down in his chest. And it looked just like these things, but yellow. Like, fully yellow. <laughs> oh my god, I do remember this game. Th- that's a game I haven't thought about in a long time. <laughs> I played it <laughs> once at a friend's house. I miss that game. So I miss the soundtrack. I don't remember if you guys remember, but the uh, the main menu music for that game slapped so oh, yeah. bloody hard. But yeah, no, these guys are bloody cool. These guys are really bloody cool. I think the feet are a bit dumpy, but there's so much kit bash potential with these guys. I'm really looking forward to see what some people like do. the Ambot kits themselves. If these follow the same like uh, theme, like not themes, but um, the same like design ideals as the Ambots, I think they're going to have a lot of bits left over from making them. Uh, originally, when I, I looked into doing like a Mondo, I wanted to do like an anti fun police style kind of like force uh, sort of thing with like graffiti going like, no, you can't obey, yeah. all that sort of free handed stuff on them. These guys would be sick for that. Oh, yeah. I have uh, my Pal Nine Forcers, I have on their shields. Uh, it, I wrote, please resist. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I don't know where they went. I got to find them again. <laughs> it does remind me of Robocop a little bit, these though, when you sort of when you start thinking mm. about where they are thematically. You know. I can't. Yeah, it's like some weird amalgamation of Ed and uh, RoboCop Two. Honestly, they're great. They're great. I love them, and I, I have. I can't not draw attention to the fact that someone. Oh man! Now that you mentioned that, I gotta paint a fucking Pal Knight Force in that blue steel RoboCop theme. That Holy, would, that would be very cool. But someone yeah. in our Discord drew attention to the fact that if you look at the vents above the uh, the lights on their torso, and if you imagine those vents are eyebrows. And those lights are eyes, and where the head is is just a mouth hole. You can now never unsee the face that is their torso. <laughs> they are a, it's just a very angry bot. I don't Wait. see how this is a negative thing. <laughs> very easy no conversion right there. There, there is. That, oh, that would be so cool. You, just, you, you take off. You don't even need to make a neural conversion. Uh, conversion. Just take the head out and replace it with like a drill Jeez. saw and set. Yeah, Jeez. a drill teeth. Got right, this. Let's, let's shimmy on over to Vashdor, shall we? The boy, the big so, man. As of today, legs eighth, for days. Legs for days, indeed. As of today, the eighth of March, 
his rules got leaked and released uh, in the same sort of 24 hour period. He's basically just a big demon prince. Yeah. I never would have guessed. I never would have guessed. <laughs> it's very Mother in theme with demons. Tankier yes. and less uh, supporting. Yeah, he's the anti-machine demon prince. If you have if you have tanks and vehicles like an Iron Hands army, I am sorry. I'm he's genuinely like dis- sorry. He's more like a disruptor than he is an actual tech priest who doesn't heal anything. He just yeah. he just hurts you. <laughs> yeah, specifically vehicles. That uh, Kratos relic tank you have for your homebrew chapter, it's just gone. <laughs> Goodbye. I mean, so I, good night. I would be very curious to know the maths on that for sure, but honestly. From like face value, looking at the rules, I don't think he's gonna be like hugely good. I think he'll. Yeah, be, I got I the same. Th- oh, sorry. No, no, no. I don't think he's gonna be a bad pick. I just don't think he's gonna be in meta. But that's fine. That's not a big deal. If you if you like forget his model and look at his base size and his stats, you could think of him essentially as a really fast flying melee dreadnought. Because he has a very similar stat line, he's got a very big hammer, and he's got loads of mobility. You know, Definitely true. Could be a very silly one, but I think yeah. something uh, something you said to you said to me, Red, before we before we got going here was that his model sucks, but his bits are amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think I think his model has a few gripes I have about it, but that could be fixed with a few a little bit of kit bashing. Namely, like the head is my biggest issue with him. I'm not a fan of the <laughs> of the bugged like out goggle eyes. I'm think, personally a fan of that. I think it's I, sick. Yeah, uh, I could agree with Red on this one, but I think it could be saved mm. with a better paint job. I think a better paint job might 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 change how I felt about that. Although the whole really bionics melded to the flesh thing is pretty cool. The wings and the hammer are amazing. They oh, are, yes, they are absolutely and the claw. incredible. And the claw. Uh, and and the claw. claw. I've, I look forward very much to taking those wings and taking that hammer and putting them on my own demon prints very soon. <laughs> they are too good to not do that. I just noticed that he's not... Is he gripping? Oh, he is gripping. It looks like he like has his thumb off his hammer. Oh, I see that, yeah. yeah that's kind of, that's that's the cool thing about Vashtor. The one, one of the few cool things, in my opinion, is that in the lore, his body isn't even his real body. He has to go around building new bodies for him to inhabit. I didn't know that, but I love his hammer. I'm gonna, I'm I gonna love... do something with his hammer. You see at the back, you've got all those mechadendrites coming out of the back of the hammer. Yeah, I was I'm just gonna, gonna say, I, lo- I, lo- I love the little grabby hand and the. <laughs> Can you imagine? What I like to think, I like to think that the hammer has a mind of its own, so it's occasionally just nipping at Vashtor's wrist. And he's just like, ah, stop and slaps it. <laughs> there, was, there was full skin there before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Occasionally, it can make it all the way to his nipple and really get him good. <laughs> Mid pal, just ow, you mother! Oh. <laughs> Please, Azrael, give me a moment. That this hammer is being very bad today. This Vashtor speaking in a very spooky, ominous, dark tone, pinch his nipple, like immediate high pitched scream. Everyone looks at him. Oh. <laughs> he's cool. He's cool, and uh, hopefully, you know, we pre up for pre order this Saturday, which is going to mm. be, if I'm correct, this Saturday is the 11th. Could you just scroll down to that image of him next to other dudes? I'm curious of the size. He's the size. Yeah, he's of pretty demon big. Prince. He's the size of a demon prince. He's I a... think he might be taller. Yeah. Honestly, no, he's definitely he's... taller. If you take his silhouette into account, as opposed to just his body, he is definitely taller. Mm. Um, he's a very he's lanky a... boy. I believe he is the same base size as the Demon Prince as well. He is, mm-hmm. and let me hold. On. I got my Demon Prince right here, right next to me, and comparing it towards like a Primaris Marine. Yeah, I, he the Primaris Marine comes up to the waist of the normal, the new Demon Prince that came out recently. Yeah, so he's uh, and little, he's about he, what twenty thirty percent bigger? Would you say? I would say like a third bigger. Yeah, about that. just by telling off the by telling with the Warpsmith's position from him. Yeah, well, the Waltzmith is about the same size as Primaris Marine, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I, I didn't even realize this guy is really great for a Nurgle Demon Prince conversion. He will be, yes. the big absolutely. old Mark III style front plate that goes all the way down to the floor. Mm. That classic bronze trim and the green. Yeah, I mean, oh, shit, the whole yeah. decayed nature of his skin as well. When, exactly, when it comes yeah. to painting, it will really, really work into it really well. Give him some plague drone rings sort of thing. I mean, after I've done my, my kit bash with him and a demon prince, I'm going to have his whole torso left over if you want it. <laughs> yeah, that's tempting. I, I, can't, I, I, was, I was thinking what I can do with it. I can't think of anything I could possibly do with it after I've stripped him of the stuff that I want. 
you know. I have a few ideas. I get that would actually play well into like the uh, instead of it being bloated and uh, like disgusting, like yeah. most de- demon princes have them be the... atrophied and withered. Yeah, more the more the the, the dec- that decay focused than the actual mm. sort of pestilence yeah. focus, which is not actually shown upon that much. That'd be a cool it's variation. Not... I, re- I remember hearing about how one of the greatest, and this is this is you know I'm not I can't give you any sources right, but I remember hearing about how one of the greatest demon princes of Nurgle was actually described as this towering, uh, skin and bone sort of monstrosity. I can't remember his name. But I, I think there was it was in the in the uh, the Plague Wars books. There was Septimus Seven, or uh, it was a one of the seven primary demons of Nurgle, and he represented decay. And he was like this atrophied, withered being that was always on the verge of dying right before <laughs> Gilman actually killed him. I should have got that the hoofs, which is very synonymous with other Nurgle stuff as well. His wings very easily out for some blowfly wings. And exactly, it would, it, yeah. would, it would work just as well, you know. Right, let's shimmy on over, shall we, to the actual meat of today's episode. The absolute uh, bingus bongus uh, that is the Primarchs After Dark. This absolute mm. mess of an idea that we came up with last week as our first episode. It's very simple. The, the rules here are very simple. You've got 18 Primarchs, and we are rating them on their performance in the sack uh, during the Great Crusade era, and this is all under under two assumptions. One, they know what sex is, because so far the books haven't given us any indication that they know what it even is. Uh, and two, that their dongs wouldn't kill anyone, that they are in fact uh, compatible with regular sized human beings. And that's it. All right, that's what we're going with. So our number one, I'll start with our first up is, uh, uh, I'm sorry if you guys have got yours down on any particular list, because the list has actually changed a little bit when I reopened the team oh. today. But <laughs> I've you... changed the list. Pray I do not change it further. <laughs> <laughs> but we are beginning no! with the angriest man alive, and that is Angron. My boy. My Immediate boy. C-tier. Immediate C-tier. So, our t- oh, I have to explain. Our tiers, we have Sex God. That's our S-tier. That's our, you know, that's uh that's the big one. Exceptional shag, that's uh that's for the that's for the exceptional shags. Competent in the sack, that's people who are not bad, but not great, you know. You wouldn't mind. Not sure why you'd want to, but okay. That's like, you know, maybe someone out there can see that happening. And then there's finally absolutely unfuckable, of which uh I would be very surprised if we don't put at least a few of them in there uh for, for this list. Now we've got all of us here today, and no one's opinion is gonna be thrown in the bin. We will pick an average of uh what we sort of decide. So let's begin with Angron, and I will go ahead and say that I honestly think he's in one of two camps. I think he's either absolutely unfuckable or an exceptional shag. Because picture this, right? You've got this sort of easy lifestyle, this easy desk job. It's, you know, your life's, it's not too difficult. And your real pleasure in life comes from having some real dominant sex. You know, some... (laughs) And I think Angron, for all his misgivings, with the right partner, could be an exceptional shag. I'd have to disagree. I feel like anything that Angron... (laughs) (laughs) If anything that Angron can give you, other, uh, other people on the list can give you. Angron's just too angry, honestly. He's just too angry. <laughs> There's nothing else but the domination in that aspect. I mean, no, <laughs> I, no, I, 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 I want to I argue against that because <laughs> I'm going to put him, I put him in exceptional shag because exceptional shag. Okay. Because mm-hmm. he won't mind drinking from the Red River and <laughs> pro- probably makes for some ferocious sexy time. Top tier top. Mm. I've I've got I've got a mixed bag when I like I think he'd be very much so does whatever the fuck he wants, doesn't care for your pleasure, only himself. But the biggest thing, which is why I'd want to put him somewhere in between competent and maybe exceptional, is he would be the absolute perfect hate fuck going around. <laughs> and there's gonna be no one better for that than him, let's be honest. All I gotta say is that during the hate fucking, you're probably gonna get punched in the face, and you might not recover from it. As some people <laughs> are pay good money for that. No, he's guy. absolutely right. Some people are so ready for Angron <laughs> to meet them in the bar, you know, to to meet them after a few drinks, to to meet them after the wedding ceremony. You know, some people are so ready for for uh for, for angron but i do see what you guys mean so i'll tell you what let's 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 say let's i'm still putting him in exceptional shag so that's one for exceptional 
one me, man, me as well. one man's domestic abuse is another man's perfect man. It's like it's... Exactly. <laughs> the two for exceptional. Aaron, where are you putting him? I'll put him in exceptional. You put him in exceptional. Man. Red, red are, you yeah. sticking, are you sticking true with unfuckable? Yeah, no, uh, not sure why you'd want to, but okay. I think I think uh, one, two, three, one. That I think we can just about say he's he's high competent in the sack mm. based on those <laughs> results. You know, I somehow I somehow don't agree with that. I think he's either up here or down there. But you know what? <laughs> this is a democracy, and so Angron is competent he's, in the sack. He's even down. <laughs> he is uh, even down. I could uh, live with that. It's just he's held back by his anger. <laughs> Our next one, and in the purpose of saving a bit of time, I'm gonna I'm gonna give some an I I irrefutable argument. Magnus the Red is in fact the sex god because he's the only person here that can make you nut multiple times in succession by just thinking about it. Yep. Yeah, I have I have no argument against that. He he is literally the whatever you fuck you want sort of thing. He is. I will. I would say A tier only because, or exceptional shag only because he's held back by his massive ego. So if you didn't enjoy <laughs> yourself, the mo like you didn't feel like you enjoyed yourself, and you tell him he's going to explain how you didn't do it right. <laughs> I, I mean, he could probably manipulate you into making you enjoy it regardless. It's like that's yeah, that's, that that's crossing some lines, in my book. <laughs> oh yeah, no, but he's have a fun time. No, I, I think I think the only argument against him, even though I'm gonna, still going to put him in the sex god category, is. That that he's great until he accidentally turns you into a chaos spawn. I don't want to think about how that that's happens. A, that's a risk worth taking. That, that's <laughs> that's, that's, uh... I think taking the averages, I think I have to quickly put him in sex god. Yeah. Right, gentlemen, the rogueliest of Dorniests, the uh, the big golden <laughs> man himself, the, uh, the stalwart defender of terror. But what do we think? Far too traditional. Way Far too bland. <laughs> Way too bland. <laughs> I've got, he's I've competent, got... but he's yeah. just cold and efficient. Yeah. yeah, I've got in my notes. I've written Rogaldorn would fuck you solely for reproduction and wouldn't even enjoy it. <laughs> it's 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 strictly business with Rogaldorn. He's, yep, he, he can nut without nutting. He can just make his <laughs> his milk go in that direction without feeling <laughs> anything at all. <laughs> so I have I'm, I I confidently. Have to put him in. Not sure why you'd want to, uh, but okay. Although actually, to be fair, Rogel Dawn is probably a hardcore bot because that man is what? masochistic to hell with that fucking glove, man. Oh think about God. it. I never think about it. Glove. Uh, think mm -hmm. about it. That man. That man's into some freaky shit. You wouldn't even know it. Yeah, he does the pain glove to <laughs> focus himself, not out of pleasure. I'd say competent in the right hand. Not sure I'd want to in the wrong hand, sort of thing. So if you like inflicting pain, he's a guy. But if not, then not sure yeah. what he'd want to. Yeah. But more often I'm... than not, that'd be into not sure what he'd want to. Competent. It's Rogel Dorn. It's Rogel Dorn. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Moot? This Should man defended terror against the traitor legions. How <laughs> dare you say you're not sure why you want to? He's a very powerful man. Uh, well, uh, as I've written in my notes, he, same as Perturabo, only less hate fucking. I, uh, I think, uh, I think not sure why. I think that average is Rogel Dawn. Oh my god, Rogel Dawn's under anger already. Blood. <laughs> <laughs> now for the next one. The the, the biggest man, the, uh, the the best man, and if certainly nothing else, the most huggable man, Vulcan of Nocturne. Exceptional shag. Except what, 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 why? Cuddling master and master of aftercare. I've got those exact same words written in my notes. <laughs> he is, in fact, the cuddling master. I don't think anyone would provide the aftercare that, that Vulcan would. He is but very. I, he is a very compassionate and loving man. I agree. I also have draconic mega cock down on my notes. So I think that's <laughs> Christ. Um, By the chaos gods. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna put him we're gonna put him up there. Man, people have sex yep. with Vulcan hardly even for the sex. They do it so that afterwards, that whilst they're catching their breath, he comes. He leaves the room and he comes back with beans on toast and some bacon, some eggs, some pancakes. <laughs> They, they do it to How the dare toast. you say grow book and bring? If someone brought me beans on toast, I would immediately like leave out the window. That distracts anything from like what we just previously said. Who brings you beans on toast? What a waste to, of both down. beans and toast. It comes down to people fuck Vulcan to feel loved afterwards, all right? Yeah, you know that's probably the most British thing I've ever said. I'm going to regret. <laughs> We have the majority here. Oh, so, who's up next? 
I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that is Conrad. Conrad Curse. That sure is. Instant. <laughs> not sure why you want to, but okay. Because some people are into the damage type. There's none more damage than Conrad. <laughs> There's none more damage. While some people uh, are into the damage type, I can't imagine deriving much sexual pleasure from being flayed alive. I I would put him in exception. Purely because that man is absolutely going to be a BDSM master. The only thing that oh, fair enough. The wow. only thing that doesn't really justify him in sex god is the risk of getting flayed mid fuck. And that's he's not. Long. This is Great Crusade era. He's not going to flay you for no reason. He's not in. That's he's true. not completely schizoed crusade. out. There's, there's that's, nothing that's in the correct. books about him shagging people. All right, we don't know. That's a great area. <laughs> well, that's what we're here to uncover, Aaron. We we, we that's the same for all of them. All right, we're here to. Well, make I said what I said. <laughs> We're here to help the writers at the Black Library understand these things, okay? For future novels, okay? Conrad Kurz is a man of commitment and justice. When he does something, he wants to do it right. I'm honestly going to go ahead. I, I don't feel like I need to justify this because he's an absolute nutcase. I am going to say absolutely unfuckable. No, so, he's not sure here. why you want to, but okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I put him in absolutely unfuckable as well. I just, why? Just why? Because <laughs> some people are into that. It's a weird average. I put him He's in the type of person that you, you that, that your parents question why are you with this man? And you're just like, I can fix him. <laughs> <laughs> so what? We've got two for unfuckable, one for not sure, and one for exceptional. You, you know what? With the logic uh, Red has presented, I'll put him into not sure why you would want to, but okay. I think that averages him as not sure why you'd want to. Yes. It's, what would you yes. reckon? Ahead or behind of dawn? Uh, behind. Uh, behind. There's behind. no way he's better than Dorn. Uh, Dorn no, is no, hyper competent. No, 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 he's gonna be ahead because no one gave Dorn a sex uh, sex god. Sorry, a sexual shag. So he's gonna be ahead of him by default, surely. Nah. I put Dorn kind of nah. 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 <laughs> nah. Right, let's shimmy on over to the Corvus Corax. the most uh, the hot topic of them all. <laughs> the uh, Mr Mr. My Chemical Romance himself, Corvus. I have him in competent in the sack because while he's probably okay at it, he doesn't fully understand. I, I put him into lower tier competent. He he knows what he's doing, but he probably cries after sex. So, my God, this man has stolen so many of my notes. I put the same thing. Hey, now, <laughs> <laughs> or did you steal of mine? <laughs> I would also put him in competent purely because he can probably see what you want before you know you want it. He just has a mild chance of having like a psychic seizure or conniptions halfway through. <laughs> so, Are you sure you didn't confuse those notes with Conrad Kerr's? Oh, so I did. Yes, yeah, so I did. I got the wrong way around. <laughs> I still think he lands incompetent regardless. I still he think does. Uh, fuck it, I've like... got two things of Kerr's down. What the fuck? Only he, he's held back because he's definitely putting on some type of fucking Linkin Park <laughs> no, no, no. During, the, during the act. Dude, that that's just a. I mean, that's just a win in my book, honestly. That's... <laughs> you like getting railed to Lincoln Park? <laughs> <laughs> just in the end is playing. Oh no! Because <laughs> no, then he's gonna he's gonna be balls deep in you, and he's gonna start thinking about Chester Bennington, and then you're gonna feel his <laughs> slide down your back. <laughs> it's, not, it's not what you want. It's not what you want. It's but it's what vibe. Corax wants. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stand by though, it'll still be better than those other two idiots and not sure why. Right, let's shimmy him up into competent in the sack then, shall we? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, we all agreed on that one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Uh the uh the, the speed Mongolian himself. <laughs> Instant sex god. Jagatai Khan. Mm. Now I haven't he... got I haven't gotten pecked for sex god. Because I don't think he's I don't think he's quite up there with Magnus. But I reckon as far as the physical body can take you, I, I think Jagatai has. Jagatai is going to push the limits of your pleasure. He's wild, but he's also controlled. He knows what he's doing, and he knows what you want. It's like riding the war horses of Chigoris. It's wild, it's fast, it's rough, but it's a fun time. The wind Whoa. in your hair, across the golden fields. <laughs> He'll ride you into the sunset. The Khan is as good in bed as all the other Primarchs think they are <laughs> exactly <laughs> he is the uh he is the indomitable speedster but he's not fast he's he, he's he's not always fast he's fast when he needs to be <laughs> sometimes he can take his time <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, difference between Mag see Magnus is a sex god because of his powers but if it was just him physically Jagatai beats him every fucking time I'd have to agree with that unfortunately Magnus does have the powers but I agree with that completely Magnus is nothing without them Jagatai is full man that's exactly you're getting exactly what you see there but I'm gonna make I'm gonna make an executive decision I'm gonna put him ahead of Vulcan yes I think he would indeed mm. land ahead of the Cuddlemeister. I think uh, so too. I, I put him into exceptional shag as well. I think he just brings that kind of Genghis Khan will sow your fields kind of vibe. <laughs> that Genghis Khan fertility. <laughs> I bring a kind of Genghis Khan sowing your fields vibe to the party. <laughs> we are all related to Jagatai Khan. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's let's quickly smash out this next one because I think we can all agree where Fulgrim goes. Yep. Yeah, I've I've uh, I've just got down. Could make a snitchy cult out of anyone. He's a he's a sex god. I will say him. I will say he's a sex god. But he always he makes it's more about himself than his partner. <laughs> but he'll still be the best sex you ever have. You know, it'll oh. still be the best sex you ever have. It's like there's this great period in history of about I don't know how long it was between how many years it was between when Fulgrim was found and when he picked up the layer blade. But there is a period of time between those two points where Fulgrim was the best shag in the known universe. <laughs> between those two points, you know. Now we don't know what the Emperor was like. He was probably pretty good but i'm just saying outside of that it's only fulgrim what do you reckon sex god definitely yeah ahead of magnus ahead sure, of magnus sure. ahead of the man Whoa. who can make you come uh... by looking at you you sure oh, yeah yeah i mean just thinking about vulgar fulgrim after having him I, I think i put him behind magnus honestly the same I, we, okay, we got yeah. a very even we got yeah we got a very evenly spaced uh, shirt so far <laughs> See, <laughs> gotta, gotta get someone in absolutely unfuckable soon right <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is not the guy for it up next. We... No, I, 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 you know, it, I, in a di- paradigm shift, I think it would be absolutely unfuckable because you don't want to ruin the purity that is Sanguinius. Mm, mm. I'm not gonna lie, <gasps> Sanguinius is the only one I've got no notes for because I didn't even know where to begin. Now I know he's obviously gonna be at the very least competent, <laughs> almost certainly exceptional, but does he? Does he cross over into sex god? See, I haven't read enough about in the books about Sanguinis' personality to know if he quite makes it into that S tier. I'd think because of that reason, from what I've read of him, I'd put him into exceptional shag because I I think one he will make you feel safe, and he, he probably loves to cuddle, and also doesn't mind drinking from the Red <laughs> River either. <laughs> Moots, fact... Moots just wants to feel safe, honestly. I think this is just a message of Moots feeling safe. <laughs> to be honest, he's probably one of only two Primarchs here who actually enjoyed a Red River. Mm, mm, I'm not talking mm, to, definitely. I'm not talking to doesn't mind, I'm talking actively wants that. Yeah. You know? I was put him down as exceptional shag. Purely due to the fact that I uh, like pre post and doing it probably feels like three different fucking religious experiences or spiritual experiences oh like. god yeah well, well if you if we're describing it as a religious experience certainly that qualifies as putting you into sex god it's not that good i i mm. it's not that, like, it's reckon? not comparable to the other two let's be honest no i guess not but let's say for a second that he's definitely exceptional let's say that mm-hmm. is he mm-hmm. as good as the khan no 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 so, but is he better than Vulcan? Mm, I, 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 I wouldn't say so. We already know that he can beat out anyone on uh, foreplay, mm. right? If he's if he likes if he likes you know red liquids that much. But as stated <laughs> earlier, Vulcan does have dr- the draconic mega cock. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, but you can fly with Sanguinius. Yeah, f- Sanguinius could actually fuck you in the clouds. So that's a bit you know. I think. Yeah, yeah, he's probably. He's... Definitely better than Vulcan. Actually. Ahead of Vulcan, but behind the yeah. behind the Khan, though. Yes, no one's ahead of the Khan. No, one, <laughs> no, no one's ahead of the Khan. Our next one is the stinkiest of men. Mm-hmm. Unfuckable. Absolute unfuckable. <laughs> Nurgle level STDs from barbarous swamp pussy. See, this is it. He, this is pre Nurgle. This is pre corruption. <laughs> However, I don't think anyone leaves barbarous without a, without at least one wart on their penis. <laughs> like, like I love my boy. Don't be wrong, but that man is absolutely caked in smegma. Let's be real. <laughs> <All right. laughs> 
this man, has, this man has smegma forming in in places that smegma has no right for on top well, leaving out eyes. like just physical appearance like he's just angry and spiteful and bitter i don't think he'd be a good shack i think even if he wasn't no i don't think even if he wasn't stinky as shit i think he still wouldn't make it far out of unfuckable yeah i don't think he makes it out of unfuckable like really even if he throw it thrown thrown down to the bin into the bin yeah. is he going absolutely unfuckable Yes. Yeah, man, this man has got the worst father issues known to man as well. So I, yeah. he is he is there. We have our first absolutely unfuckable. <laughs> oh man, I feel so sorry for him. I really do. I don't. He he deserves that. <laughs> he made his own way. bed, he which is. no one else will be sleeping in. Right. Our next one up is the lion. Mm. Now, what have yeah. I got? What have I got written down for the lion? Where is he? I'd probably say not sure why you'd want to, but okay. I have him as exceptional, but he only he will only do it if it directly helps the emperor. <laughs> I think and he's he's exceptional, exceptional. But like I, it, no, if he if he actually if he if he was committing the act, I think the lion would be one of the best. He just doesn't want to do it. I put him under unfuckable because he probably thinks touching women is cringe. <laughs> why are you thinking about tits? <laughs> As a feminine <laughs> trait, you should be thinking about war. Actually, no, I put to move down to unfuckable as well because he'd probably one rather be doing anything else, See, no motivation. It. And then knowing the lion, he'll fucking fall asleep halfway through it. <laughs> I, I've, I've also put him in absolutely unfuckable, because, and I've simply put this man has zero interest in sex. He probably doesn't even know what it is. Why um, are you wearing more... that revealing dress? That is cringe. I'm, I'm gonna go out and say it though. He's still more fuckable than Mortarian. <laughs> Yeah, because you won't die from like, long-standing <laughs> issues after. Yeah, exactly. I'm more like, and Mortarian's going to be sitting there with like an inch from your face with heavy breathing. Right. Next sure. one is ah. uh, Alpharis mm. and Omegon. Now, I will throw this out there: Alpharis and Omegon, they come as a pair. They come. Uh, <laughs> they come as a pair. Maybe they come as a pair. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I had them down as like my my in my notes. I've got. Competent in sack, 50 50 chance, either the best or worst fuck of your life. <laughs> I have <laughs> I have the same thing as competent in the sack, but they're each other's hype men and they definitely <laughs> say ooh, ooh and ironically. Hey, this is the thing. Uh, I've got absolutely unfuckable for two reasons, right? Uh -huh. They're more first is that they're more interested in each other when they're having sex with you <clears> than they are in you. And the second is that there ain't no way you're going to bust a nut when you look up at them and see that they are making fucking dead stare eye contact with each other. There is no way that you're busting a nut when you see them doing that. It's, it's going to be like the scene from American Psycho, but instead of a mirror, it's just the twin is sitting in the corner flexing and pointing like, yeah! <laughs> The worst spit roast to ever spit roast. <laughs> On top of that, at yeah, the uh, end of the at the end of the session, it, you're gonna find out that it wasn't even Alpharius or Megan. It was just one of the Marines. <laughs> Speaking of spit roast, I put them under. Not sure why, because they will definitely do the Eiffel Tower on you. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! We're not. I'm not putting anything on the screen to show the audience what that is. You're gonna have to Google that yourself. So I. So how how many have we got for unfuckable? I think that's one. You. Uh, that's me. All right. What about not sure? Me. One. And the other two are competent in the sack. I think that just about puts him in not the high end of not sure. Do we reckon ahead, the two of them ahead or behind of Dawn? Yeah. Behind yeah, Dawn. No, 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 in front of Dawn, because front these guys are at least motivated to do something. Yes, it's just true. awkward for the yes. person on the receiving end. That's true. They would be ahead of Dawn. Oh, poor Dawn. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck Dawn. Imperial Fist fans are not going to be enjoying this. Right, I know the picture's a bit spooky. Imperial is... Fist fans don't know what sex is. Don't make the Valrak joke. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> So the next one we've got, and remember, this is in his prime. I know the pitch is a bit deceptive, but prime, Great Crusade, mm. Horus Lupercal. Exceptional Easy. shag, but behind Easy. the con. Easy exceptional shag. Yeah. The Johnny Sins of Warhammer. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Sins of Warhammer! <laughs> Only yep. gets better with age, right? He's de he's damn near at the same level as the con, but the con just <laughs> inches out just ahead. Probably I'd put him ahead of the inch. con, honestly. No one's ahead of the con. I've literally just got written in my notes that He's 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 got way too much charisma for it to not be one of the best shags you've ever had. Yep. Mm. You know. Oh, that was it. That's what I got. He is the only one on this list, the only one, apart from Fulgrim, who will make you come 
by saying the exact thing you need to hear whilst he's balls deep inside you. You know how some people are verbal in bed and it's like, if you do it well, it's great. If you do it badly, it's fucking hilarious and terrible. He never says anything but the perfect things to say. That's his oh. charisma. That is the power of Horace Lupercal. That's what I'm saying, man. So I think Johnny Sins. Johnny Sins. <laughs> but he's yep, going, definitely I think exceptional, Shag. I still think behind the car, right? Yep, I, I think know. so too. Right, Ferris Manus. Absolutely unfuckable, immediately. He's just not really? interested. <laughs> See, exceptional Shag, opposite opinion. I've gone for competent. I reckon he's he lays down good pipe, but he's just too detached, you know? I don't think like, he's interested. But he's like the same, up. the same issue. He definitely ha- is like uh, he could be up there, but he's just not interested. He's just too busy uh, trying to make better machines. In uh, retrospect, fisting of a lifetime, like right. the fist <laughs> master, <laughs> and he also me. definitely <laughs> has like the perfect porn star bionic penis because those do exist. Oh my god! <laughs> what happened to Absent. his hands on Medusa? <laughs> happened to his dang <laughs> Oh my goodness. They call him Steely Dan. Definitely (laughs) has the perfect porn star penis, let's be honest. That thing's fucking big. All right, where are we Uh, putting him? I'm I'm saying competent. I'm also putting him under competent. He probably only wants to fuck Fulgrim anyway. Yeah, I'll say competent as well. Understandable, to be fair. That's that's yeah. that's that, no, that's at the front. That's definitely. Oh that's yeah! Definitely oh yeah! That's ahead of these things, for sure. Oh, definitely. Okay. So our next one is the wolf himself. Now I'm going to go out there. I'm, I'm not going to explain this too much. I reckon he's an exceptional shag, but I reckon he's behind all of the other exceptional shags. I say mm. he's a high competent in the sack. There's too much hair, and he's trying to prove that he's the best. I, I yeah. agree with competent. He he will dom you to hell if you're into that. You're into that, but he doesn't care for what you're being. He does it exclusively in the doggy position as well. Mm. <laughs> it's a one yeah. yeah. Higher competence, in my Cur- opinion. Curiously enough, though, he is, out of everyone on this list, he's the only one that probably thinks he's the best. Yeah. <laughs> he's the only yeah, one that's like, sure. I'm definitely. He better. thinks he's the con. <laughs> right. Let's put him Let's put him ahead of. Well, he's definitely ahead of Ferris. There's no way that Ferris performs better than Lehman. Mm. And like, much like Sanguinius, this is the other Primarch that is probably super happy to go down when the uh, when the river's I'd, flowing. You know, I'd, <laughs> I'd put him behind Ferris, honestly. Really? I don't know. Just, just from my previous points, I feel put him ahead of it a bit. Like, no, like, Fer- Fer- like Ferris has got the energy. Manus has got the equipment. He's got the hardware. Like <laughs> Ferris has the energy, and Manus has the equipment. That's the same. No, guy. no, 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 no. no. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Jesus. No, I know Sleep. what you mean. I know what you mean. Uh, right. Our next one oh, is uh, is is Logar. Absolutely unfuckable. Agreed. Agreed. I he I think it's him, sinful. I I put him I put him into lower tier exceptional because really? I bet he will get you feeling spiritual. The opposite opinion definitely has an erectile dysfunction. <laughs> I I put in I put Logar in uh, unfuckable because. Damn. Unfortunately, he was abused as a child, and we all know where that leads. <laughs> so I'm afraid uh... Lorgar, is, Lorgar is banned from sex. I'm afraid. <laughs> You've been banned from sex. I think so... the votes that falls into lowest, not sure I'd want to. Oh god, I can't believe he's ahead of the lion. That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm thinking about. Oh my goodness. Right, we've got the t- these two. These next two are actually going to be fairly similar, I reckon. Mm. Uh, we've got we've got Perturabo up next. The the Perty of Rabo. What do you reckon, Moots? Where where does Perty go? Not sure why. Honestly, uh, he only fucks for procreation. There's no pleasure involved. Mostly hate fucking. Nah, nah, the, the Iron Warriors found a way to avoid sex. It's not fuckable. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's it. I reckon he's going to be just like Dawn, but a little more involved because he's an emotional person. Definitely. Has Everything about Perturabo is that he's competent. <laughs> he's not, he he's just not... wants affirmation after the fact, and if you don't give it to him, he's going to get really upset. He yeah. he, he needs aftercare afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, let's be real. The man, the man's a Warhammer fan and Warhammer. He's not getting enough of it anyway. Yeah. Put him in fucking mm-hmm. That's. Uh, oh, I think I can I can comfortably put him in competent. Mm. Put him up there. Okay, Aaron, what do you think? I was I mean I put him in unfuckable. Uh, oh really? Oh no. <laughs> uh, let's be honest. The man would have no idea what the fuck he's doing anyway. Like, be real. <sighs> I, I, this is the I man probably... that orchestrated the heresy. It wasn't Horace. It was all Perturabo. 
He can uh, dick you not, down. That's not sex, though, man. <laughs> what, about, what about you, Moots? Can you provide a tiebreaker on this uh, this big bastard? Uh, I'd probably put him in lower tier competent. So what, we got three for competent and one for unfuckable. I think that puts him in lower tier competent. And finally, we have probably the, the currently most important loyalist Primarch in the setting, Rebooted. Exceptional Yogi. Shag. Honestly, he is exceptional shag. He's yep. he's intelligent, uh, he's adaptable. More than anyone else here, he's going to listen to what you want. I'd put him maybe mid-tier competent. The man is the most boring, vanilla fucking guy going around. He'll like, be good at what he does, but there won't be anything interesting to it. So we got one for exceptional. Man has zero kinks. Mm-hmm. One for competent. What do you I'd put him in higher, higher tier, probably competent. Mm. What about you, Red? What do you think? He's either the lowest tier exceptional shag or he's the highest tier competent in the sack. Gilman knows what he does. Gilman knows what to do and when to do it. The problem he is can find probably... the clitoris. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is true. Oh man, that's funny. So that's it. That's that is the list, gentlemen. The the Rebute Gilman is actually uh is is who's dead center? Isn't that crazy that the the two averages? <laughs> if you you want an average shag from a Primark, you go for Lehman Russell or Angron. <laughs> This list is insane. <laughs> yep. Although I do think our sex god and absolutely unfuckable decisions are pitch perfect, and no one can tell. Oh, me for this. sure. Mm-hmm. You know, I think they're really. I think those are great. How much time do we have left? We've got we've got just under five minutes left, boys. Are there any like changes we're thinking about? I still think Rogaldorn deserves to be higher. I I I think if I had to change, if I could change anything, I would I would maybe bump up Angron and Lorgar, but uh, I am also very biased, so I can't I can't honestly justify putting Angron any higher. I I can't see it. There's a loads of world Eater fans who've who've read about Angron pre Butcher's Nails who are screaming at me right now, and I totally get why, but. Uh... I just don't see it. I guess I'm just blinded by the potential of him without the nails, right? It's uh, <laughs> that that that's what I want. That's what I like really want. Unfortunately, he does he does indeed have the nails. Well, yep. this isn't the AU you dreamt of, Moots. This is no. the real this is the real world, the Great Crusade world oh. with nine foot tall sex gods. <laughs> I tell you what, though, I would be prepared to put Rogel Dawn ahead of Alpharius and Omegon. I don't mm-hmm. know if I can justify putting him competent because he's just not going to care about your feelings, you know. No, but he had their motivation for it either. Was the, was the point, wasn't it? That's why yeah, they got ahead no, of it. You're right. You're right. At least Alpharius and Omegon will enjoy it, even if they're not enjoying you. <laughs> so, counterpoint: uh, Dorn kills Alpharius. So <laughs> that's that's very true. That's very true. Right, so are we all okay with the list, or do we desperately want to change anything? What are we thinking? I think it's nah. solid. I think it's solid, honestly. Yeah. I think it's solid. We think this is the great. is this the the definitive list that this is the official Warhammer shag list. Time <laughs> Black Handed into Games to Workshop. <laughs> the Black Library needs to take heed of this list. You know, if anyone <laughs> if anyone's listening from the Black Library, and you want to make you know the forty k books a, a series for adults, not children, this is the list you need to look at. Mm-hmm. Yes. We'll have a the Q2 hit children's Q2. novel Conrad Kerr is the Night Haunter, where he schizoed out in a room full of corpses. Do we know quickly? Does anyone know off the top of their head who the artist was who did these little bits of art? Yes, I do. Uh, uh, not not his name, but I do follow him on Instagram and. I just I wish I knew off the top of my head so I could quickly uh, quickly say his name as some kind of credit. But if I can't if I can't think of it in the next few seconds, I'll post it afterwards. I don't think he wants to be credited for this man. You don't reckon? <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a deep. Uh, yeah, his uh, his name is uh, I'm gonna butcher this. I hope I don't. It's uh, Joannis uh, Hegelson on Instagram. Oh, that was okay. a lot of good art. I want to commission this man. So and with that. Uh, thanks so much, uh, everyone, for tuning into this very first session of the Astartes Anonymous podcast. We really appreciate everyone that's made it this far somehow listening to this. Not many of you, we know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we can't wait to improve uh, every facet of this podcast in the future and continue uh, making this this content for you. So thank you all very much. And thank you to my co-hosts. And, and yeah, cheers. Yeah, thank you. Go follow Moots right now, or I'm going to find you. We're deep at night. <laughs> I swear to God, they have Dominus Knox. I'm coming for you.